Welcome, everyone, as we gather for this time of worship. It is uh, that time again in the week where we gather together uh, for worship as we, come before, as we come before our wonderful God who has blessed us, who cares for us each and every day, who guides us in our daily lives, who has, who has blessed us with family, with friends, with the opportunity to come together. So my friends, as we gather for this time of worship, uh, there are a couple of announcements. Uh, one at St. Andrews and Arthur this weekend, uh, we will be ordaining and inducting our three new elders. Uh, so that is exciting. Uh, St. Andrews and Gordonville uh, services will be suspended uh, until around March uh, 6th or the first Sunday in March. Um, we will be reevaluating that in the next few weeks um, just to make sure everything's going good. Uh, also, next week at St. Andrews and Arthur, uh, we will be celebrating communion. So uh, we will be able to take part in that uh, holy, uh, holy time of gathering together uh, and sharing uh, the, the cup and the bread as Jesus taught us to and as Jesus commanded us to, to continue to do. And he reminds us that wherever two or three are gathered, in his name, he is there also. So my friends, as we gather for this time of worship, I invite us to turn our attention to a responsive call to worship, which comes from Psalm 84. So I will leave this, the slides marked with the L, and if you don't, we'll all say together the slides marked with the A. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord, my heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. For those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand's elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of, the wicked, of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. So my friends, I invite us to join together our voices as we sing together, Give to the winds thy fears.
as we have uh, read Scripture together, let us also lift our, and we've also sung together, let us also lift our hearts to God in prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we come into your holy presence. We know of your greatness and the love that you show so many of us, that we are made in your image. And Lord, even though you are seated on the throne in heaven, you care about what is going on in this world. You have blessed us with your Holy Spirit. You have come to us in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, to reconcile each of us to yourself. Lord, you recognize that in our hearts, even though we were made in your perfect image, our hearts have wandered away from you. We have allowed sin to enter into our lives. We have chosen ourselves over you. We have chosen what we do not know over your known and faithful love. We have chosen darkness instead of light. We have chosen to allow hate to reside in our hearts and our minds and our very lives instead of allowing your truth to live and thrive in us. Forgive us, O Lord, and help us to walk in your ways each and every day. And Lord, grant us your peace as we come to you. May we know the fullness of your love and of your grace. May we be, be saved through your wonderful gift of grace. Lord, we thank you for the, for the promise of, of forgiveness and the grace that you have shown us. The forgiveness that you have given us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we pray, Lord, as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our moment for mission this morning comes from uh, Pastor Melvin uh, and the church More Than Conquerors down in Santa Ana, uh, El Salvador. And uh, this week, uh, uh, El Salvador and Canada met in uh, qualifying for the World Cup. Uh, it was quite the game by the sounds of it, um, but we won't go into details there. But we're focusing on the ministry that uh, Pastor Melvin and Dina are, are doing down in uh, El Salvador. And they are ministering in their community. Uh, they offer discipleship programs. They uh, go into the schools and help with sports programs. Uh, they also help with uh, bringing people out, out of the justice system and helping them to transform their lives. So they are doing all this ministry while also dealing with, as we all are, uh, the pandemic. And I know there's been a number of uh, sicknesses that they've been uh, dealing with, so I just pray for, we pray for God's protection. Um, and as we continue to bless them with our gifts, May they continue to do the work that God has laid on their hearts, that God has opened doors for them to do. So let us uh, take this moment, we'll, we'll take a moment, and we'll pray, Lord, uh, pray for their protection, uh, pray for their blessing, uh, uh, pray for your blessing on them, Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the work that is going on down in El Salvador, and Lord, we pray for Pastor Malvin and for Dina and for their whole family, Lord, uh, as they continue to minister in, in Santa Ana and ministries that flow out from there, Lord. Lord, we pray for for help for, for, the, for the school ministries, for the sports ministries, Lord. We thank you for the, the coaches that have uh, stepped up and are helping to change young people's lives, Lord, helping to create opportunities for, for life outside of gangs. And Lord, we, we thank you for the discipleship ministries that are going on there, for the food ministries that are continuing to happen within the church and within the community, Lord. And we also thank you for for the ministry to people exiting the justice system, Lord, um, and how, looking to change and transform their lives. And Lord, we know that you are the God of transformation. You are the God of second and third and fourth chances. And we thank you for the opportunities that you are, are giving uh, to, to Pastor Malvin and to Dina and to the uh, whole church community and the community around Santa Ana, Lord. 
Lord, we pray for your pr protection on them and for your healing from uh, health problems, Lord, that from COVID and uh, from other problems that they're facing. Lord, we, we thank you that you truly are the good shepherd. You are the Lord of all. And in you, we can trust because you have been faithful from the beginning of time. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friends, I invite us to uh, join together singing Jesus, Tender Shepherd, Hear Me. It is time for our Sunday School time, and today we are continuing on the theme of calling. Uh, last week we looked at Jesus calling uh, Peter, and Peter was a fisherman. He had uh, a little bit of training in the Bible or in the Torah as, as uh, they would have been focusing on the first five books of the Bible, um, given down uh, from uh, Moses but he didn't quite make it as a disciple of a rabbi, so he went back to the family business. He was a fisherman, and Jesus comes up on the seashore, and there's a whole crowd of people, and then Jesus gets into an empty boat and says, Peter, come on over, and Peter takes him out, and he teaches from the boat, and then he says, Peter, let down your nets, and Peter goes, uh, we were out fishing all night. We didn't catch a single thing, but because you said it, we'll, we'll do it, and he caught his nets filled up with fish, and he had to call out uh, to another boat to help him. And then he said, Jesus, or Lord, get away from me. I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm a sinful person. Well, today we're looking at another call, and this is on Matthew. Now, Matthew and Peter are kind of similar in a lot of ways. Uh, Peter was a little bit more accepted, but again, he was lower down on the social uh, ladder. Matthew a lot richer, not accepted. He was a tax collector. Uh, there were sinners, and then there was tax collectors. The sinners were above the tax collectors. People did not like tax collectors. They saw tax collectors as cheats, um, as people who shouldn't be trusted, as people who shouldn't even be part of the worshiping community. And what does Jesus do? He goes up and he says, Matthew, come and follow me. And then he goes over to his place for dinner with other tax collectors. And the Pharisees are going, this is just all wrong. And then Jesus, well, I'll let you watch the video. Uh, it's a video from Saddleback Kids uh, on the call of Matthew. So let's watch. Stories of the Bible. Jesus calls Matthew. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Jesus was in Capernaum and he was walking along when he saw a tax collector named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Tax collectors were hated by everyone because many people thought they were cheaters and sinners. Oh, no, I tell. Ugh, let's get out of here. But Jesus saw this man and said, follow me and be my disciple. Me? Yeah, you. 
So Matthew got up, left everything, and followed him. Later, Matthew held a banquet in his home hey, yes. with Jesus as the guest of honor. Uh, you are here. Oh, thank you. Many of Matthew's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. Ugh, yuck. Hey, you! But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Ah, uh, hold on there. When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go on and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. So Matthew went on to be one of Jesus' 12 disciples and followed him throughout his time on earth. He even wrote a book in the Bible about Jesus' time on earth, and he served God for the rest of his life. Isn't it cool how Jesus calls people no matter what their past is? Because sometimes we think that we're not worthy. We're kind of like Peter or Matthew. We're, we're not worthy to follow Jesus. We've done things that uh, we're not proud of. And yet Jesus says, I will forgive you. Come follow me. He says that to all of us. He invites us all to come and follow him. And he works on transforming who we are. He works on healing, as he said to Matthew, or about, about the tax collectors. Excuse me. I didn't come for the healthy. I came for those who need help. So here, Jesus is helping. He helps us. He helps others. He brings forgiveness. He brings grace. He showers us with his love. And that is a gift. Let us uh, join together as in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and wonderful God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. Lord, we thank you that we are all called to follow you. Lord, help us to hear this call. Help us to listen and help us to follow. Not just hear the words and turn our backs on you, but to truly follow you. To follow you where you lead us. To allow, uh, to, uh, to help us to, to live lives that are transformed in your grace. Lord, we don't always trust you. We don't always follow in your ways. We don't always, we don't always do as you have commanded us in your scriptures. We don't always follow your leading, but Lord, we want to. We want our lives to be lives that are transformed by your grace, that shine for you each and every day. And Lord, as we come to this time of prayer, we lift up to those, lift up to you those who are grieving uh, the death of loved ones. Lord, we know that we are yours in this life and in the life to come. And that, as Jesus promised, he is preparing a place for those who believe. And he has prepared the way. And Lord, we, we know that in this delicate and fragile life that you have blessed us with, that there are times of joy, but there are also times of grieving. And the times are gr of grieving are a reminder of the great love that we have shared together. It is times of, har of hardship because of the great wonders and the way that our stories have intertwined together. Lord, we pray that you'd walk with those who are grieving, whether it's grieving loved ones from this past week, this past month, or years past, Lord. May you help us all to walk the journey of life, even the times when we are, are weighed down with grief. And Lord, we pray for those who are struggling uh, with cancer. Lord, we know that it is very prevalent and it wears down on our resiliency, wears down on our strength, it wears down on our patience. 
But Lord, we know that you are faithful to walk with us. Lord, we pray for healing. We pray for strength and we pray for patience. But most of all, we pray that you would be with us and that we'd recognize your presence in these times. Lord, we pray for those who are walking alongside and caring from a distance. Lord, we know that this journey is, is difficult on, on family and on friends. We pray for your, for your continued presence and, and love to lift us all up. And Lord, we pray for the many people who are, who are struggling during this pandemic, for those who are struggling with the restrictions, for those whose livelihoods are in, in desperate need of help, for those who have lost what they once had. Lord, we know that the, these times are difficult for everyone. Help us, Lord. Help us to do what is right, to speak your truth in love. Help us to not be overwhelmed by the fear that is created. Help us to walk in stable footing on the rock of our salvation. And Lord, as we turn to your word once again, may we hear you speaking to us. May these words be more than just words on a screen or words on a page. May we recognize them as the powerful words that have come from you. Guide us, Lord, in our reading, in our hearing. May they take root in our hearts and nourish our souls. May you bless our minds with wisdom that we might understand. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture readings today come from the prophet Malachi, chapter 3, verses 1 to 4, and from the letter of Hebrews, chapter 2, verses 14 to 18, and from the gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. And the prophet Malachi writes, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. And they will bring offerings and righteousness to the Lord. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And the writer of Hebrews says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and he had been revealed, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, 
a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. When we think about the importance of detail, uh, some of us are very what we would call detail-oriented. Uh, we have that, per, that, that particular gift of looking at the minutia, looking at the minute details that are all around us to make something work perfectly. And in the, the gospel message today, we, we look at some of the, the minute details that are there. We look at what God is doing in that plan that God is, is continuing to live out. We see little breadcrumbs that build together in what God has been doing in the life of people. And when we think about just that, this little um, moment in time that God has brought together, that God hasn't missed any detail, that God has continued to build on what has been laid before him. And he builds up into the beautiful story of salvation that has changed our lives. So when we think about the, the detail that is being uh, offered here, God has a perfect plan. And sometimes we understand what that perfect plan is. Sometimes we see it very clearly. And other times, and this is probably the, tru the, the, truer, the, the truer reality is that um, sometimes we don't understand. We don't understand what God is doing because He's looking at the big picture and we really only see a small, minuscule mosaic tile. We don't have that opportunity to step back as God does to see the big picture of what is going on. And sometimes we are so focused on our little mosaic tile that we don't even see what's going on next to us. And yet the story from the gospel, it is recognizing that there are multiple levels of what is being done and what is being said here. Um, Mary and Joseph go to the temple 40 days after Jesus' birth for, for the purification offering. Um, depending on who you talk to, depends on whether this was a, a time where Jesus was um, this was an offering for purification for Jesus because he was the firstborn, and it is an offering of, call, of redeeming um, Jesus as the firstborn son. Now, this is important because within the, a lot of the, the scriptures, uh, the firstborn son was, w represents um, the, the line of Levi that is dedicated to God. So, you had to make an offering to, uh, to God because he was firstborn. Now, this is going back to uh, just after the Exodus uh, when the nation of Israel is getting the, uh, the Ten Commandments and getting all the Levitical codes that are being put in place, and there's certain offerings that needed to be done. The other offering that this is, is possible to look at is the offering for Mary. Now, when they say they, so they're talking about Mary and Joseph, they both went up. Um, usually there is an offering made by the, the woman who is pregnant um, as a, a, a cleansing. Uh, so, so in this instance, when they're mentioning both, uh, because Joseph was at the birth, there would have been a ceremon ceremonial uncleanliness to them. So there's an offering that needs to be made. So whether we're looking at whether, which offering is truly being made here, um, is open for debate. I've read, I've read both uh, distinctions here. So when we're looking at this, 
the key thing here. They're going on the prescribed time. They're being obedient. And it's building on what God had, or God had revealed to us earlier on in the scriptures, in the, the narrative or the nativity story, that Mary was chosen because she was faithful. Joseph was chosen because he was faithful. So you have these two faithful parents following the law. They're following what has been laid down. They're not going, well, this is uh, a little bit ridiculous. We don't have time to go to the temple right now. They're going and offering the sacrifices as God has laid out. Now, we don't offer these sacrifices anymore because we see that Jesus has died once for all that our sin and the, the ceremony on cleanliness isn't the same, uh, or the offerings for these is not the same as it used to be. We recognize Jesus as the Lamb of God that reconciles us. Uh, he, has made, he has offered his life as an offering for many. So we don't recognize and we don't follow these same laws. So these might seem a little bit um, over the top for some people. And yet, f- for Mary and Joseph, it was a sign of their obedience, of their faithfulness to God. It wasn't about themselves. It wasn't about their own comfort. It wasn't about uh, how, they did, how they wanted to do things that day. This was part of how they offered themselves as servants of God, how they, how they directed their lives towards God. And this is important for us to remember. That it's not just about our own comfort. It's not just about what we want that time. Even in, even in our day and age, we are, how we do things has changed. Some would say we've become more relaxed. Some say that we've questioned some of the superficial stuff uh, that we don't, don't do as much anymore. And other people say that we've lost something because we don't do those things. We don't follow that uh, particular example that has been passed down to us. So there's many different questions about uh, even ourselves. Are we being obedient in our worship? Are we being obedient in our daily lives and how we order our lives towards God and towards each each other? So this is very important. Uh, Simeon, Another element, another layer to the story. Simeon is present, and the reality is we don't know much about Simeon. We get a very brief couple sentence history. He's been there, he's righteous, he's devout, he's been praying, and the Holy, he's filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit has said that he would not die before he sees the Lord's Christ. Simeon's life is ordered towards God. Is ordered towards the worship of God, is notice, uh, noted that he too is righteous, he too is faithful. Anna is also present, she is a prophetess. Uh, again, we don't know much about her. But both Simeon and Anna's name are mentioned. We know that Anna is from the tribe of Asher, we know that she'd been married previously, she's a widow, she'd only been married uh, seven years, and then her, her, her husband died. And then she spent the rest of her time uh, at the temple worshiping and sharing the, the, uh, sharing the word of God. Now, the interesting thing here is we have two names. We don't know much about them. We don't know their wider significance. But names are important, especially when we're looking at the scriptures and with the letters that are, are, are being written. When a name is given, it is a sign of of someone who you could go and ask. Now, the reality is, is that the, Simeon was a very common name at that time. So you have a name that's given, you can conceivably, conceivably go and ask them to verify the story. The backstory isn't always the most important thing. What is happening, what they both do, they are both demonstrating their faithfulness to God and their willingness to share what God has laid on their hearts to share. Their messages are important, not their backstory. Their messages are important because it links not only the Scripture, and we read through in in Malachi. Malachi was a prophet at least 400 years before Jesus was born. 
Malachi is even talking about the coming of the Lord, that the Lord would be in His temple. And here we have Jesus, the Lord, the Son of God, in the temple. Imagine that. 400 years previously, this prophecy is being foretold. And here we even have Simeon, who on, who's been told that the Lord will, you will see the Lord's Christ, the anointed one of God, the Messiah, before you die. And we hear that Simeon, Simeon was led by the Holy Spirit into the temple that day. So you have God working the pieces together at the right time so that His story, so that His message would be heard. And you see, there's also the message that he is given, a righteous, devout person is giving a very similar message to what the shepherds did. And both, you have Joseph and Mary marveling at what is being said. So you have that buildup. You have Gabriel, the angel Gabriel saying, you are both faithful people. Continue on this path. You have the shepherds telling about the angels. You have Mary giving birth to Jesus. You have Simeon sharing this message of hope. Now, this is, this is a little bit of a mixed message, too, because he, he's mentioning that there will be times of trouble, that even you, Mary, well, your, your heart's going to be pierced at times. There's going to be heartache here. But this is a message that God is continuing to build on. It is a message that is in line and it is following together what God has already done, the system that God has already put in place, the faithfulness of the people that God has already chosen. And you see that message being echoed in Anna also. You have here acts of faithfulness. And sometimes we we miss the first act of faithfulness, and that is from God. God's faithfulness to His people. God has been faithful to Mary and Joseph. God has been faithful to Simeon. God has been faithful to Anna. God is being faithful in and through Jesus. That the prophets foretelling, that the message that God gave to the prophets is being realized in this. That a building block that many people would say is way out, of, way out in left field is suddenly in the foundation. It's suddenly being realized as important, as true. And we see God's faithfulness being lived out. I've mentioned Mary and Joseph's faith, faithfulness, uh, being faithful to God by following the Levitical requirements. Again, we look, we, we, we struggle with the Levitical requirements. We struggle with what God has laid down in the book of Leviticus and some of the requirements that they had to follow at that time. We struggle with some of the requirements that we have today. Uh, we struggle with our own uh, worship, our own faithfulness, how we order our lives, how we take time with God. We struggle with that too, and yet we see Mary and Joseph living faithful lives, going and following even the minute details. Simeon and Anna being faithful with the entirety of their lives and sharing the message of God, sharing the message of God with strangers, with people that are coming to the temple, living lives that demonstrate God's righteousness, God's love, God's grace. And throughout all of this, And I pointed out that we don't really know much about uh, Simeon and Anna for a reason. Because the backstory is not our defining story either. Sometimes we know so much about the backstory, about what's happened in our past, about our sins and our successes, that it colors how we see things today. And yet, when we come in and follow in God's faithfulness, it is not about our backstory, it is about God's backstory. It is about God's continued faithfulness. It is about the transformation that God is doing in our lives today. It is about the message of the good news of the gospel, which is powerful, which transforms lives, which transforms history. Because when lives are transformed, the message of the gospel is alive and rooted and well in this time and this place. And people's lives are, 
are flourishing because of the gospel. People's lives are being transformed because of God's good news, because of God's grace and love and forgiveness as realized through Jesus Christ. See, what is our story is God, the good news of Jesus Christ that you and I are living out as we see through Simeon, as we see through Anna, as we see through Mary and Joseph, as we see through the Gospels and Jesus Christ. That is a blessing, that is a privilege to be part of. The question is, how are you going to live out the good news? How are you going to live in the power of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ today? It's about how we gather for worship. It's about how we focus our vocabulary, how we focus our minds, how we focus and give in our days. Are we going to be a blessing to others? Are we going to follow God's leading and call those that we have, uh, that God has laid on our hearts? Are we going to go and say hi? Are we going to go to the grocery store at the time that God has ordained, and you might think that's a little bit overkill. But imagine, imagine if Simeon decided to take a little bit longer doing what he was doing. He would have missed Mary and Joseph. He would have missed Jesus. Don't belittle what God is doing, even though you think that it's meaningless at the time. Because when we act in faith, when we act and are living and listening to God, He's going to use us. He's going to bless us. He's going to invite us to be part of someone's life transformation, that we are part of that obscure brick like Malachi. And most people, when they think of Malachi, they they don't actually because it is an obscure book in the Bible. It's very short. And yet, it is, there's so many building blocks of what God is doing, of what God is building, of a story of salvation in the book of Malachi. How are you going to live out the good news today? How are you going to show your love and obedience to God? How are you going to let God's love and grace shine so others can see? Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you are doing and all that you have done. Lord, we know that you are at work in our lives. You are at work in lives around the world. That this is your world. That we are made in your image. Lord, help us to live as your people, speaking your truth, sharing your love, sharing your good news, sharing your grace allowing our lives to be transformed by your Holy Spirit so that others' lives might be transformed also. Help us to listen when you call. Give us the courage to go where you lead. Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, I invite us to join together as we My friends, I invite us to join together as we sing, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You.
May God's blessing go with you as you go where God calls you to. May you go in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father and of the Son, the Holy Spirit, to be a blessing as God has blessed you, to be faithful as God has been faithful to you, to love others as God has loved you. Until next time, my friends. Amen. I invite us to join together as we sing, Go and Love. It has been great to gather to this, at this time for worship. May you share the good news of, of God's love, of God's grace that is seen and realized through Jesus Christ. May you live it out, live out your faith with the depth of belief and the depth of life change that God has given to you. Until next time, my friends, may I be at peace with God, with each other, and with yourselves. Amen.